Hey guys, so today we're going to be covering the topic of meiosis in the IGCSC biology syllabus and this topic for me is kind of challenging a little bit but I think that's just because I'm overthinking it a little bit too much so yeah, let's just get straight on it and see what you guys think of it. We're going to cover first of all the definition and role of meiosis. So meiosis is essentially a type of reduction nuclear division and this just means that it halves the chromosome number of a cell. So in other words, it turns a diploid cell into a haploid cell, and meiosis produces genetically different cells. And it is used especially in gamete production, and this is basically just producing sperm cells and ovum. Now we're going to look at the process of meiosis itself. It is worth keeping in mind that the syllabus actually does not require you to remember the specific details of the stages of meiosis, but I'm just using this diagram here to help me explain it a little bit better and to help you understand it a little better, hopefully. So the first part of meiosis, which is right here, is actually called meiosis 1, and it is very similar to mitosis. You can check out my video on uh, mitosis for IGCSE if you want, but essentially the chromosomes get doubled or duplicated and then they're lined up and then they're split into two and these cells are both diploid cells and then meiosis 2 will start and this is where it differs from mitosis so each of these diploid cell will be split up into two again in order to produce four haploid cells that are genetically different genetically different is a key word because meiosis is used to produce sperm cells and egg cells because it gives variation. This is important because we want our offspring to be varied. We want this because it is very important for survival and for evolution. Like, if you imagine a disease spreading in a population and then everyone having the same genetic code, then we will all be wiped out. However, if there is variation, some of humans will survive and so we will continue to reproduce. And so yeah, it's important for our survival and evolution, like I said. So there are two ways in which meiosis can do this, and this will be the first way. So when the chromosomes are being lined up, there are many different ways which the chromosomes can line up, and these are just two ways. So as you can see here, if it is lined up this way, then the resulting gametes will end up with these chromosomes. Whereas if it is lined up this way, the resulting gametes will be these instead. This is kind of hard to explain. It's very visual though, so feel free to pause this to look at the diagram in more detail if you want. And then another way that meiosis can produce variation is by crossing over. After the chromosomes are duplicated in meiosis 1, these are the two chromosomes that are homologous to each other. So yeah, these two, these two X's. So they will join together at a point, and this point is actually called a chiasma, and you don't need to know about that. But yeah, they join at this point and then their genetic material will be exchanged. And you can see clearly right here that the offspring will have a different genetic code from their parent. And all of the offsprings will have different genetic codes from each other as well. Now I want to summarize this video. So the definition of meiosis, it is a type of reduction nuclear division which halves the chromosome number of a cell to produce genetically different cells. It is used for gamete production and it can give variation by crossing over between homologous chromosomes, like I just said, or it can do that by giving many different combinations of maternal and paternal chromosomes. And once again, yeah, that was very visual, so feel free to go back and pause it if you want. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful to some of you, and if it has, please leave a like and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and yeah, like and subscribe for more.